video. There was a line in there about most generous triggers. It was it was just a beautiful song about re allowing everything to be retranslated. So thank you for your most generous triggers. That's that's what you can say initially to your boss. <laughs> thank you for your most generous triggers. <laughs> and and underneath it, metaphysically, what it is is that, that the ego is raging at God. You know, the ego is the belief that there is no God. So it's no wonder that the ego has this rage against God. And, you know, the ego has, it's quite ingenious, so it will do things like invent its own God. It, it invents a punishing God. Uh, it invents a human God because it's so angry at the real God. It's, it's like, I'll put somebody else in the throne, out of an anthropomorphic God that, that in the Bible sometimes seems to get angry and zap tribes and do all kinds of things. Uh, it will invent its own God, and yet <coughs> underneath the ego's rage, basically it's made up of fantasy world and cosmos that's part of its identity, and it wants God to grant reality to the fantasy. And so far, in so many millennium, God is not uh, saying yes. It's, God is not like a, a parent that finally gets so frustrated at, at a temper tantrum that's been going on for a millennium, that finally God's just going to say, like, give in and go, all right then, have your fantasy. Oh, right, I created divine love. If you want to stick with romance and sex, then fine. <laughs> I'll make it so. I'll grant eternity to your little dream world. And with God not granting that eternity, the ego is just raging. So when you feel upset at your boss, you're just feeling the ego's rage. And it's just projecting it out onto the boss. You know, that's a convenient little uh, scenario for it. And the other thing is, you can start to see it in terms of the authority problem that the belief that you can leave spirit and leave the spiritual identity and make up a time-space little slab of flesh as an identity, that's what you could say that's the authority problem. That's a, that's a direct manifestation of the authority problem. And so it really comes down to like this fundamental identity confusion of wanting to be right about littleness and to deny magnitude. That's what anger really is about. To deny the magnitude, deny the huge grandeur of creation, and just hold in place littleness. And it's quite typical for the authority problem to be projected onto parents and bosses and judges and lawyers and police officers, any role or concept that seems to be in a position of authority, you know, that seems to be able to say, here, this, I'm going to tell you what to do. And of course, bosses are known to, to tell employees or subordinates what to do. And the ego's rage just comes up, kind of like, how dare you? Very much, if you looked at the human life cycle to what they call the terrible twos, when this sense of me, my, I comes in and the little child points with the finger back at the parent and uses, discovers that word, no, <laughs> and sees the look on the parent's face. Ah, what have I just stumbled upon here? <laughs> I don't even know what it means, but I like it. <laughs> expressions of, of the authority problem. And so once you start to have that, that sense of, oh, this is the dynamics of it, and this figure that, that we're calling the boss is, is my permission to allow it up into awareness. It's so pushed out of awareness, the ego doesn't ever want us to get too in touch with that anger because you know, eventually when we follow it in, we're going to realize that the ego is the source of the anger. And that we 
don't have to settle for it, you know, we can actually let it come up and out. And we can actually let it go. And in that sense, you know, thank you for your most generous triggers, thank you for this opportune. Uh, oh, thank you for showing me what I pushed out of awareness and didn't want to face. Jesus never says there's anything wrong with anger. When Jesus says anger is always is never justified, he also says that pardon is always justified. So he's just saying, allow into your mind that idea that forgiveness or pardon is always justified. And when you're tempted to get angry at a brother or a sister, instead of letting the ego rattle off a whole list of reasons why that feeling is justified, just pause a moment to consider what is really happening and realize that you have the power to choose again, to actually make another decision. And admittedly, as long as there's still unconscious beliefs surfacing, that, that that anger may come up again, or it may take the form of guilt or shame or fear, or come in a different form. But instead of us judging ourselves for that feeling, we do need to allow ourselves to get in touch with it and, and be shown by the Spirit what is underneath it. So when I would go to a movie, or I would have anger come up in a relationship, or a certain context or situation, it was like the old time out. Time out here. I'm going to take this moment to go inside and see what is it that's eating me on the inside. What haven't I given myself permission for? or allowance for. And when that becomes your mode of operating, then it's like forgiveness seems to move much quicker. And we become much more humble when those moments of anger arise. <laughs>